the previous videos, we have discussed three examples of analyzing a structures by using three different methods of analysis, which include the moment distribution method for a continuous beam, the moment distribution method for substitute frame, and also the analysis of the moment acting in the column. These examples are basically based on the same configurations of the structures. The structures is basically comprising a continuous 3 span beam with the span of 6 meter, 4 meter and 6 meter. There will be a column height of 3.5 meter on top of the beam and 4 meter below the beam. As the method used to analyze the structures differ, the calculated value from the analysis methods also differ. Also, the total amount of information that can be extracted from different methods of analysis also differ. In these videos, we are going to compare the analysis outcome based on the tree analysis method by referring to the tree example that we did previously. If you haven't gone through the tree calculation method, you may flip back the relevant videos before you proceed with the discussion here. This will help you to comprehend more in terms of the outcome of the three different analyses. The envelope bending moment and shear force diagram for the continuous beam method is given here. As for the subframe here, the bending moment and shear force diagrams are given here. This analysis method ignores the contributions of the column in terms of resisting the moment. That means that the moments are to be fully taken by the beam. And for that, the stress are distributed within the beam until it reaches to a state of stability in terms of the fixed end moment. When all the loads are to be fully taken by the beam, it will lead to a higher degree of moment throughout the continuous beam in comparison to the frame structure. Same goes to the shear force acting on the continuous beam. In another word, the design of a continuous beam based on this analysis is normally more conservative than the frame analysis. As for the analysis by the frame, the columns are assumed to take certain degree of moment throughout the members. It means that some degree of moment here are to be distributed into the columns. This will give you a slightly lower moment force acting within the beam and same goes to the shear force diagram. There is another significant difference between the two methods. The continuous beam method assumes the beam end does not carry any moment. As for the subframe method, there will be moment acting at the end of the beam. This will give you a more critical end moment and end shear force at the end of the members. The continuous beam member is unable to determine the moment acting on the column. To determine the moment acting on the column, normally we need to calculate from a substitute column. The substitute column here is actually referring to this column which is represented by this element. 
The largest moment acting on the column will be determined by the maximum load at the longer span and the minimum load at the shorter span. It is found to be 18 kN meter for the upper column and 16 kN meter for the lower column. In comparison to the moment obtained from this frame here, this frame seems to be more critically demonstrated with a higher degree of moment at the upper and lower columns. The main reason is this frame analysis is considering several different types of load combinations. These numbers are obtained based on the worst case scenario. As for this sub-column frame, only one case is used. Lastly, this slide gives us a summary of this entire chapter. A structure can be analyzed in terms of the vertical load acting on the structural element or in terms of the overturning load acting on the entire structure. The analysis outcome for the overturning load are basically the reactions and the overturning moment. You will need to consider the actions, whether it is favorable and unfavorable. And under different load combinations, the most critical situations is selected. For the analysis of the structure subjected to vertical load, in the case that the lateral load is ignored, that means this chapter is only applicable for brace frame conditions. The structural element can be in the form of simply supported beam, continuous beam, or frame analysis. The simply supported beam analysis is very straightforward. By using standard equations of static equilibrium, you will be able to obtain the moment and shear acting on the beam. Of course, the columns are ignored in this kind of analysis. As for the continuous beam, you may calculate by using the moment distribution method to obtain the moment and shear load. There will be two set of load conditions that you need to apply. Within either set of the load arrangement, you will have to analyze for different combinations of the maximum and minimum loads. Develop the shear force and bending moment diagram based on each load combinations. Merge the diagrams together in order to obtain the envelope shear force and bending moment diagrams. This calculation step is rather lengthy and tedious. Alternatively, you may choose to refer to table 3.5 for BS at 110 for a simplified method. This method is normally slightly more conservative in comparison to the moment distribution method. However, please note that there are several conditions for this method to be applicable. As for the frame analysis, subframes are analyzed. It can be in the form of the entire floor or in the form of center beam or in the form of columns. The frame analysis is normally more tedious as compared to the continuous beam analysis. The larger the frame, the analysis will be more tedious in comparison to the more simplified versions of the frame. The degree of information that you can obtain from the analysis also differ. You will have to choose the analysis method wisely depending on the needs of the analysis. 
The outcome of the analysis may differ between different methods. The differences normally is not that significant. These differences are normally can be absorbed by the high degree of factor of safety applied to the actions and also applied to the materials. If you are very familiar with the analysis of the reinforced concrete structures, you can even use different methods freely. You can always search for a simpler method which gives you a slightly higher degree of conservativeness. For example, while determining the mixed band bending moment of a continuous beam, if you wish to cut short the moment distribution methods, you can actually assume it to be simply supported beam. As the mixed band moment for a simply supported beams are normally greater than the moment distribution method for the mixed band beam. However, you need to be very careful with the negative moment happening at the support of the continuous beam. As the simply supported beam analysis method will assume the support to carry no moment which actually in the continuous beam, there must be negative moments to appear there. To be safe, you are recommended to use the right method at the right time to analyze a reinforced concrete structure. For the analysis method, which is going to be rather tedious and lengthy, you may always make good use of the design spreadsheet or some analysis softwares.